Well, my grandfather was uh, a tiny landlord. Was considered after liberation was considered be a bad guy. So um, I, I I know how tough it was uh, when I was a kid. I went to the uh, Hangzhou Hotel now called Hangzhou Shangri La Hotel because that was the hotel can receive the foreign visitors. So every morning for nine years, I showed them around as a free guide. They taught me English, and uh, I think that changed me. Today, I'm 100% made in China. I've never got a one-day train outside China. And uh, people, when people talk to me, say, Jack, how can you speak English like that? Why sometimes you talk like an Amer Western guys? I think that was the nine years. These Western for tourists opened my mind because everything they told me are so different from the things I learned from the schools and from my parents. So now I have a habit. Whatever I see, whatever I read, I use my mind. Think about it for two and minutes. That, you tried to get into three colleges. I tried. There is an examination that young people, if you want to go to university, you have to taste, take the examinations. So I failed three times. Right. But I had a lot of fail. I failed for funny things that I failed a key primary school test for two times. And I failed uh, like a two, three times for the middle school, middle schools. You, you will never believe in, in Hangzhou, my city, there's only one middle school that lasts only one year. It was changed from primary school to middle school because our graduates of our, our, our school, no, university, you, no middle school accept us because we were too bad. Yeah. <laughs> they would become a middle school. <laughs> what effect did it have, though, uh, being rejected? Well, I think we have to get used to it. We're not that good. Even today, we still have a lot of people reject us. When I uh, in the, graduated from universities, and before I, you know, for three years, I tried to fill in the universities. So I applied jobs for 30 times, got rejected. I went for a police. They said, no, you're not good. I went to even the uh, KFC. When KFC came to China, come to my city, <laughs> you 20, 24 people went for the job. 23 people were accepted. I was the only one guy. <laughs> and we went for police. Five people, four of them accepted. I was the only guy that I rece received it. So to me, being turned down, rejected. Oh, by the way, I told you that I, would, I applied for Harvard yeah. for 10 times rejected. <laughs> I know I'll be rejected. Yeah, sorry I just don't now. want to say that. Yeah, sorry now. <laughs> 10 times you wrote them and said, I'd like to come to Harvard. Yeah, and then I told myself, somebody I should go teach there, baby. <laughs> I think that can be arranged. <laughs> I, I went back to China with the Seattle dream of the internet. I believe this thing is going to change the world. I believe this thing will be good, big. But whether Alibaba, uh, whether Jack Ma and his team can be successful, I don't know. I told the team somebody will be successful, but not, may not be us. We have to work very hard. So it were tough days in China, year 2009, six, uh, 1996, 1997, and we go nowhere because we, we only, I borrowed $2,000 from my friends and families and relatives together. But we compete with China Telecom. They have money, they have the mob, SOE, they are state owned business, they compete with us. Finally, you know, they cannot kill us because we want to survive. And we, of course, cannot kill China Telecom. So we had a joint venture. They have a 70%, we have 30%. And I was so stupid, I think they really love us. But they got us because they want to kill us. <laughs> uh, five, seven bosses, they have a five, we got a two, everything. Without even say our idea, say we don't like it. So, so I say, maybe I should go into Beijing, go to Beijing, join the government. Maybe they can help us promoting the internet. So we went to Beijing, joined the MOFTEC, Ministry of Foreign Trade, as a part-time job, contract for 14 months. I work inside, I find government can never, ever promote the internet, uh, you know, make internet business. Because the philosophy of internet is try to develop, how to make other people develop the business. But the government, they want to control at that time. So it's a totally different philosophy. They are smart, they're good people, but they think, how can I make it using internet to manage and control? But we think we shouldn't make not control, making other people develop. So different philosophy, I think it won't work, so I left. And then uh, during these days, I met Jerry Yan. And then I uh, think, well, you know, no chance in the government, no chance in that, and then I believe we should not give up. 
So I was in a desperate and think a lot. I said, let's go do it again. So we went back to Hangzhou. Start, I, I invited the 18 found, you know, my students and friends in my apartment. Year two, 1999, February 21st. We took the video. I was talking about you know, the future. People looked at me, these guys are crazy. <laughs>如果说我们是早上八点钟下班好的团队，我们自己，我们自己知道，我们，我相信我们是可以一打五折，这个梦不会破，这个泡沫不会破，我们为后面的三五年所付出的代价是非常惨重，只有这样的惨重的代价才会赢得我们未来的许多的成功。
80% of the young people in China can be successful. We don't have a rich father, powerful uncle. We don't have one dollar from bank, one cent from government. Just work as a team. So what do you worry about? I worry about it today, young people, a lot of young people lose hope, lose vision, and start to complain. Because I, we also have the same period. Because when I got, it's not a good feeling being rejected by so many people. We also depressed, but at least later we find that the world has a lot of opportunity. How you see the world, how you catch the opportunity. So, and the Hollywood gives me a lot of uh, inspiration. Do you want your husband to be a rich person, or you want to be your husband to be a respected person? She said, of course respected, because she never believed, and I don't believe we'll be rich people. <laughs> We just don't want to survive. <clears throat> and tell them that if Jack, I, I don't think in this world there are a lot of people be rejected more than 30 times. <laughs> if we, you know, the only thing we never give up, the only thing like we're like a forest gun, we keep on fight, we keep on change ourselves. We don't complain. Whether you were successful or not successful, I find that one per people, when they finish the job, if they make the mistake, if they fail, if they always complain the others, this guy will never come back. If the guy only check himself, yeah, something wrong with me here, something wrong with me there, this guy has a hope. I'm a lucky guy. I will say the, whether I'm a luckiest guy or unluckiest guy in the world. Unluckiest because I go nowhere, I don't have a privacy. I never thought I could be like that, you know? And, and, and people say ugly looking, but I think I'm a unique looking person. <laughs> yeah. Right, people, but Remember nobody, me. Nobody will call you handsome. I, I know that. So <laughs> you have a terrible view of judgment. <laughs> so with my background, my family background, with my uh, education background, it, I would be like uh, minus two or minus three if this is zero. <laughs> Honestly, because I know who I am from a, a, my father, my my mother, and my aunt. You know. Nobody in my family that have is like a government officer, a business leader. That is why in the past 20 years, we never got even one cent from government, one cent from the China banks. Because you don't have any one sheet, right? So that you just have to do from scratches. And with my, that like my, so what, no matter how hard I work, I probably like get two or three if there's a 10, two or three, that's my top. But today, I'm like a six. So the four difference, that does not belong to me. That's not me. So people think, Jack, you're so good. No, I'm not that good. But people say, you're the bad. No, I'm not that bad, right? <laughs> well, our motto helps those nations have the small business. Which if you have a lot of small business, if you have a poor infrastructure of commerce, commerce the reason why China E-commerce grow faster than American because the American e infrastructure of commerce was so good. You have a Walmart, Amazon, whatever mall everywhere. Because <laughs> they don't need it. They do. But for us, we don't have that. So when internet comes, we become the main infrastructure. So I said, in America, e-commerce is a dessert. We in China, we are main cause. This is why those nations if your e-commerce, of your commerce infrastructure is bad, internet e-commerce will be good. And for internet, internet financing, same thing. America, you don't have internet financing, guys. You don't. We China have. Why? Because our financial system in China is too bad. When it is too bad, it's the opportunity. Now China rural areas, we go to the rural help in the villages. Villages, 10 years ago, no chance because people don't use PC. Too complicated to use PC. Today, everybody have a mobile phone. So villagers, e-commerce, internet grows so fast. This is why maybe Indian country like Egypt, those with good population, poor infrastructure, young people, your nation has a great young people a lot of. It's great opportunity. When you have young people, it's growth. But don't mean you have a bad, the old people bad, but young people, <laughs> you know, they are the changer, they're the shapers of tomorrow.